everyone. I am very, very excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Um, as the ambassador has probably already mentioned, I discovered a supernova when I was 14 years old. Um, so before I talk to you about how I got there, I just want to give you a quick science lesson about what exactly a supernova is. <laughs> So a supernova is an exploding star. Um, basically, the explosion happens deep in the core of the star. And supernovae are the end of a supermassive star's life cycle. So you don't have to worry about our star exploding anytime soon. No worries. Um, so the supernova that I discovered, unfortunately, is not called the Caroline Moore supernova, although I would love to have a supernova named after me. Uh, it gets a name called SN2008HA, so if you hear me refer to it during the presentation, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's located about 62 million light years away in a very far away galaxy. Um, this is a notable discovery not only because I was so young when I made it, but also because it's the least luminous supernova ever to be observed. Basically, us scientists, we sit around in front of a computer all day and we compare images, a new and an old image of the same area of the sky, and we look for the bright explosion of the, of the supernova in the new image. So that's a brief about how we do our supernova research. Oh, one thing that might be important to mention is that I'm 17 years old now. This supernova was just discovered three years ago. So sometimes I stand up here and I have all these great things to say and people don't realize that I'm only about the same age as most of you. If you're familiar with astronomy, uh, this diagram might be a quick help. The bottom is the path of a supermassive star. You can see that all stars start off as stellar nebula and they move on to their main sequence star and eventually become a supernova, um, which can result in a black hole or a neutron star. So something about me that really got me going was I've always been an interested kid. I've always been curious, curious, climbing over my dad's shoulder, trying to figure out how things work. You know, he's fixing the plumbing under the sink, the water spraying everywhere. There I am, trying to get involved, see what's going on. More like a pest, but uh, you know, I learned a lot from it. It's worth it. Um, so it's very important to me from a young age to learn more about the world that surrounds us. And I've always been so curious. That's the, that's the key word is curious. And so having an interest in the heavens and in, in cosmology and, the, and astronomy was a natural move for me because in astronomy there's so much to be discovered. There's so much we don't know about space. Um, so naturally I, I gravitated to be interested in astronomy. So now I'm all excited, I'm all pumped about astronomy, and I sound like a nerd, that's because I am a nerd. Um, <laughs> so of course when you're so excited about something, you have to grab all the information you can. I started reading books and magazines as soon as I could. The first time I looked through a telescope w w was when I was four years old, so obviously I wasn't reading books then. But as I got older and my dad and I got a, um, my first telescope, I was able to get more interested and more interested and eventually uh, was able to join some organizations and clubs that set me on the right path and kept my interest going and uh, eventually got a mentor, which is a really key thing that I want to talk to you guys about today. Um, so the next really important step for me was I joined an astronomy club, you know, I was involved, I was about uh, 12 or 13 years old at this point and when you join an organization I'm sure some of you are members of a club how many of you volunteer do some kind of volunteer yeah yeah it's, it's a great thing right um, I came in just trying to learn more about something that I was so passionate about but volunteering is an interesting thing because as you volunteer you come in trying to learn more but what's great about it is it's an opportunity for you to give back to the community and that's exactly what I was able to do. Um, also, it's a great way to demonstrate what you're capable of. What, um, you can demonstrate how passionate you truly are about something and you can show, um, oh, there goes the mic. You can show um, you know, what you're capable of and you can demonstrate to adults who unfortunately to the youth, I know there's a lot of high school students here, sometimes say no a little too much. So volunteering, for me, 
I was able to join a supernova search team because I was seen as a reliable person, someone who was really passionate about something, and I was asked to join the Puckett Supernova Search Team at 13 years old uh, as their youngest member. So, if you may have noticed, there's the word, you know, level up in the top corner, level one we're on. Because I like to think of this as kind of a game, a game of life, a game of falling in love with something. And you'll see how we, we come across some interesting things in our video game here today. But for you, we're on your level one here. I want you to get excited about something. I'm sure that all of you have a passion, right? This, raise your hand if you do something. You spend your time doing something else besides your work or your studying or something. You love to play a certain sport. You, you, I don't know, love animals. You volunteer your time. So being passionate about something is easy because as long as you're curious and you have this, this um, thirst for knowledge, you soak up things like a sponge, then you're well, well on your way to being successful in, in this passion that you have. And lastly, what's important is to get prepared because if, if any of you know and you're very committed maybe to a job, your career or something, you know that it's, it's a commitment. And when you truly fall in love with something, it takes up all your time, which shouldn't be a bad thing because you are supposed to love it enough that you enjoy spending hours and hours and hours till 3 o'clock in the morning looking at your computer looking for supernovae and not going out and having fun with your friends, but that's okay. <sighs> So I would say to you is to grab all the information you can. Get all the information you can on your topic of interest. Go to the library. And of course, I will say it again and again throughout this presentation, the internet is your biggest tool. The internet is amazing for lots of reasons. I know that we all love Facebook so much. And that sometimes hinders our good use of the internet because we're on Facebook. We're already a couch potato on Facebook. But now we have to be a little less lazy so we can, we can still stay on the couch, but now we have to actually use our computer for good use. Um, this is a perfect place to find a mentor, um, find a local organization. If you're lucky enough to, ha to live in a city and you have a planetarium or observatory right around the corner, then great, take advantage of the internet to help you find um, those things. And of course, you've already heard how much I love to volunteer. So um, if you're a student, I, I was speaking at some schools earlier this week, and they said, yeah, I don't have time to volunteer. You know, I study so much, and I don't have time. I can assure you, make time for volunteering, because you never know where, you're, where it'll bring you. I, I told some kids this weekend, um, you know, get involved with a local university around you. Um, start volunteering. You might come in sweeping the floors if you're 12 or 13 years old. You come sweeping the floors in the planetarium, but who knows, in four years when you're ready to apply to university, guess who might have a scholarship? Guess who might not have to pay? Um, so, you know, keep those things in mind. Volunteering might seem uh, too much work, but I can uh, assure you that it pays off in the end. So, up to this point, I made everything sound so great, so simple. You know, we can all do it. It's an easy process. All you got to do is send an email to uh, President Obama, and you'll be sitting in the White House doing, you know, internship like that. I understand that there are roadblocks in the way. I, I understand that there are obstacles like any good video game. What fun would the video game be, be if we don't have obstacles to overcome? You can't shoot the bad guys. What fun is the video game? So um, I do have a quick quote for you. And some of you may have heard of this guy, Randy Pausch. Has anyone seen the last lecture or heard of Randy Pausch before? Well, if you haven't, it's worth looking into. Um, it's, he's an amazing guy. And he says this. He says, but remember, the brick walls are there for a reason. The brick walls are not there to keep us out. The brick walls are there to give us a chance to show how badly we want something. Because the brick walls are there to, uh, to stop the people who don't want it badly enough. They're there to stop other people. They're there to stop other people. They're not there to stop you. Um, if you're truly passionate about something. I had a rehearsal yesterday. I was nervous out of my mind about this. And sometimes I come up with these strange metaphors that just 
They come off the top of my head. I don't really know where they come from. And I got an email last night from someone sitting in the audience, an American girl who's doing an immersion program here. And she said, I love that really strange quote that you gave. And I told these girls, I said, I want you not to be the coffee grinds. I want you to be the coffee. So the filter, or the brick wall, filters every all the coffee grinds out. You want to be the coffee, the nice cup of coffee in the morning. You don't want to be the coffee grinds. Because if you're the coffee grinds, you're truly not passionate enough about it. Um, I do want to give you some quick resources. If you're specifically interested in the sciences, I'm not forcing you to be interested in the sciences or astronomy. But I do, I do have some resources for you through Zooniverse. It's a way that regular people like us, even starting from a really young age, can contribute. Um, it's free, it's just a way to fill in the holes of science, because that's really what my job's about, <laughs> is filling in the holes. You've got mapping weather patterns, analyzing papyrus. You can be in competition with me and try to find supernovas. So um, just take a look at it, jot it down. It's a great website and a great resource. Um, so. This is the biggest thing for me. Clearly, I'm a very shy person. Clearly, I don't like to talk to anyone. Uh, so the best advice I have for you is don't be shy. If you become passionate about something, if you become knowledgeable, um, and, you, and you, you, you are contributing, and you love what you do, don't be afraid to stand up here on stage like I am and talk and tell people and share your experience. Because a passion is not worth having if you are not sharing it with other people. Where would you be if, if someone hadn't helped you along, right? So you never want to become that adult or teenager who's saying no, you know? Um, so don't be afraid to be your own best friend, as my mom always says. Don't be afraid to say, yeah, I've done this and I've done that, and maybe you're interested in having me intern at your place, you know? Don't be afraid to, to express how passionate you are about something. And of course, like I said, Volunteering is a way that you can do that without even having to say a word. Um, so I did mention giving back is really important. You know, I discovered a supernova. It's great. It's the least luminous supernova ever to be observed. It's a big mystery to scientists. But what makes this even better is not that I contributed to science, although that's great, but I come here and I dedicate my time and I talk to people because I want to share what I've done with everyone else. Um, you know, I've flown five hours to talk to all you guys and I love doing it. I love being up here and talking to you. And I think you will find the same thing. So don't be afraid to share what you've learned because I consider it my responsibility as someone who has good experience and good knowledge that it's my duty almost as, as a global citizen to share my knowledge with you guys. Um, I think you'll find that through this experience, an experience that you have exploring your passion, you will grow as a person. And this sounds really vague right now, but in about one slide, I'm going to explain that to you. Because I came in as this big astronomy nerd, which I think you can still tell I am, but um, I've come out as a different person. I mean, I've always been bubbly, socially, chatterbox, I don't shut up, but this experience has changed my path because now I not only want to be a nerdy astronomer, but I want to work with people. I want to collaborate with people. I want to share um, and, and I want to go into the behavioral sciences and international affairs because I like working with people. And as much as a nice laboratory all day is a wonderful thing, I think that I like people a little bit more. So I'm trying to explain to you that you will acquire other skills that you never, ever dreamed that you would. Um, so keep that in mind. You're going to learn other skills along the way, except for just besides the ones that are your passion. So I've been telling you that I've done some things. I've had an exciting journey. I always feel like I'm bragging when I get to this point in the uh, presentation. Um, I've been to the White House a few times. I've hosted the first White House star party with the president. It's been an exciting journey. I love doing all these things that I do. And if you have gotten a chance to read my bio, you probably think that you can never achieve what I've achieved. You know, you're my age, how can you catch up now? You're 30, how can you catch up now? I tell you, it's possible because in the beginning, do you think I knew that in six months I was gonna be 
you know, on the Rachel Maddow show, which is a popular New York TV show, or I would be at the White House. I joked around with my friends about it just a couple months before it happened. So if you're truly passionate about something and you take these steps that you need to to get where you need to be, this is easy. This part's the easy part, is getting here. It's all the other work before it that's hard. <laughs> Um, so the ultimate prize is feeling like you have success. You are your self-made success. People are there to help you along the way, but you are what has made you successful. Um, taking these tools and using them to your advantage. Uh, don't be afraid to, to explore your resources. Don't be afraid to be your own advocate. Don't remember that school is super important. You have to be competitive with the rest of the world. I've been explaining to kids all day, this is just the last few things that I really want to express to you is, you know, the ambassador said it, English is really important. If you've been out to the, the, the stands outside, she talks about how English is really important. But also remember that if you struggle with that, as I've had many kids tell me this week speaking at schools, if you're interested in astronomy specifically, I have a problem because I get images every single month from a Spanish observatory. You have the best resources in the world at your fingertips, but someone just needs to show you they're there. You have them, it's just a matter of realizing that you have them. And I found talking to students that that was the thing that they were lacking, was not the resources, but someone to tell them that they have them. So I haven't showed you a picture of my supernova. Normally, um, during a presentation with the little kids, I always have them become a supernova hunter for the day. And I have them try to find my supernova. Um, so this is a real data set, just like I would have if I was scanning images. I briefly explained it, I know that was quick, but this is, this is what a set of data looks like for me. I have an old image, um, which is my comparative image, and I have a new image. And my job, once I get these images, is to compare them looking for a change, which is the explosion from the supernova. Now, um, this smudge here is a galaxy. I know that doesn't look like a pretty Hubble picture like you're used to seeing, but that is a galaxy. Um, there's lots of reasons why it looks like that, but we won't talk about that, no. Um, <laughs> so my software would blink these images back and forth like this. And I would compare them, oh, uh, uh, looking for a change. So I'm gonna go ahead and point out the supernova. The supernova would occur in the new picture. I'll blink it one more time for you, oh, to see if you can. So the change you're looking for in the new image, hopefully someone has spotted it. Remember, it'll be in the galaxy, so I wish that I could have you all try to find it, but I'm gonna point it out for you. The supernova is that, now remember, this is the least luminous supernova ever to be observed, so it's really dim. It's that dot of white right there. So you see all this whiteness, this lighter whiteness right here? Uh, it's the little whiter dot <laughs> that's right there. It's really hard because to hold my hand steady, but <laughs> you get the idea. Um, if you Google me, you can come up with a million better pictures to look at, but it's the least luminous supernova ever to be observed if you hadn't noticed. So <sighs> to end my presentation, I have this last little bit for you guys. So you have all been sitting here today listening to great ideas. And you know, you've been getting great things that you're gonna take home and you're gonna, you're gonna think about and it's been a really great conference for all of you. But guess what you could have been doing while you were sitting here? In the time that you've been sitting here today, you could have been taking a picture like that. And when I say you could have, I literally mean you could have because Online, through the internet, if you do some research, you will find that there's foundations all over the world that have telescopes that are um, made available to the public, and schools especially, for remote use. So you log in on the computer and you can take a picture like that, all by yourself, any one of you. It just takes a little digging on the internet, and you can do that. So that is pretty much it. Game over, because we were the video game concept, you get what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> thank you very much.